This is not just an invitation to watch this video. It is an invitation to embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation. I invite you to subscribe to the channel so that you can regularly receive this source of inspiration and share this message of growth with those who are meaningful in your life. Eat myself. The Apollo Hospital uh, neurosurgeons cut through my skull and try to find something and found nothing, <laughs> totally empty. So they gave up and just patched it up. Here I am in Delhi with a patched up skull, but no damaged brain. Going to the next birthday, I may cripple myself, it's possible. Even if it is so, I am willing to stay, if it is going to go like a wildfire, but I don't see that. I'm confirming this to you, for sure I'm not coming back. In my moment in time, I am fully sorted out. People around me are still thirsty to know and to grow. If they show little boredom in front of me, I'll be gone. Going to the next birthday, I may cripple myself, it's possible. Even if it is so, I am willing to stay. They better know. It's very hard for you to digest. I am devoted to you. Devotion does not mean that I have to bow down to you or touch your feet or sing your praises. In every way, I live for you. That's devotion. I took this very birth to make this happen for you. And that's devotion. When you hold someone's well-being above your own, that's devotion. Somewhere we knew that such a day will come where you will leave us, but when it happened in this manner, it was like a, a sudden hit on your face, you know, that, okay, what we thought is a, a long, distant reality is starting to hit us now. Renowned spiritual guru Sadhguru underwent surgery at a Delhi hospital for a life-threatening brain bleeding, we are told, but now he is sick. This will come to you only when you know you could die today. You could die today or you could die tomorrow, then you will not struggle and handle with everything. You are willing to let go of things. When you believe you are going to be here forever, you go on accumulating and struggling with these things. A seeker suffers much more than others because now he knows the pain of ignorance. Most people in the world do not know the pain of ignorance. If you do not know the pain of ignorance, you have real, no real longing within you, isn't it? You are the kind, if you eat a pizza, you are happy. I'm not saying you should not enjoy your pizza. It's just that if you eat a pizza, you think life is fulfilled. Now, you still don't know the pain of ignorance. You think by eating, sleeping or indulging in this pleasure or that pleasure, life is complete. You still do not know the pain of ignorance. The pain of ignorance should tear you apart. Then the longing to know becomes intense. If the longing to know becomes intense, it is just one moment. The reason why it seems to be so far away is simply because the necessary longing has not come. It is just off and on longing, accordingly off and on experience. If the longing becomes so intense that till I know I cannot sleep, I cannot eat, I cannot breathe, if it becomes like that, just in one moment you will know. Because what you are seeking is not sitting on the mountain or floating on the clouds, it is within you. Right now that's the tragedy, it's right here and people are missing it. There was a time when I first came to this, if I just looked at people, I would burst into tears, just seeing what they are missing. Right here, I am exploding with ecstasy. People are walking around with long faces and it's there in them also, I can see it right there. But they are going about totally unaware of it. I would just cry, if I see people, tears would come. Now I got season and I just laugh at them because <laughs> there is no other way to handle life, you know. <laughs> One of the ways is, now there is a wall, you jump up and fall down, you have a glimpse of the outside. There are many jumping methods, we can make you jump and have you see a glimpse of it. The glimpse is shown to you because that is not the end of it, that is the inspiration. If you don't have a glimpse, then you don't have the momentum to keep it going, isn't it? 
mind becomes hopeless, oh, maybe there is nothing beyond this, maybe this is all there is after all, eating, sleeping, reproducing, dying, what else is there? This is all there is to life, you will try to convince yourself. So a little glimpse is given so that now suddenly everything here becomes stale, you want to know something there. The glimpse is only an inspiration to give you the necessary momentum to go on with life, to go on with the search and seeking. Now, jumping and looking beyond the wall was good at one time, after some time it becomes frustrating because it's just one moment looking and falling back again. So what we need to do? Now jumping is not good enough, we need to build a ladder. I've always described yoga as a ladder to the divine because now you're learning how to build a ladder. Most people think generally in the world, they believe that if they die in their sleep, it's wonderful. What a horrible desire! You want to die unaware? Because you're so scared, you think dying in sleep is better than dying awake? I want you to die fully awake. This whole process of how to die, I have learned to always transform pain into a possibility. There is a whole art and a science behind it as to how to die. What are the conditions you must set up so that you die properly? Meditation is like death, please see. If you really become meditative, it's almost death-like. Everything that you call as myself will die in meditation. Your personality, your accumulation, everything just falls apart. So in that moment, untying the bondages is easy, that's why meditation. So if you did not meditate, at least death, at least the natural process that is offered to you must be made use of, isn't it? Um, a person who meditates is consciously willing to die every moment of his life, that's why he goes into meditation, so that he's constantly aware of the mortal nature of his existence, so that he doesn't become egoistic and stupid. If you know you will die tomorrow, suddenly you will see, you will have no anger, you will have no remorse, you will have no hatred, you will have no jealousy against anybody, you will become very loving and nice. An intelligent being will live with this awareness, it could be just today, why tomorrow? What you call as life is just a brief happening. Once you're constantly aware of this, you will come alive. When you live here thinking you're immortal and eternal, then you live a stupid life because you can always do it tomorrow, you know? When to do Shambhavi? Tomorrow. How could you just leave and go like this? We want you to be with us. Now, uh, question is, look at the world, there is so much to be done. Why go? It's still con too concerned about what about me? What about me? <laughs> Whatever, if you can call this a fire, this fire is choosing people selectively, it's not going like a wildfire. If it is really going to go like a wildfire, <coughs> maybe we'll live for hundred years, but I don't see it that way. Because people are still <coughs> in the process of trying to keep myself going until the next birthday, I may cripple myself, it's possible. Even if it is so, I'm willing to stay, if it is going to go like a wildfire, but I don't see that. Isn't it? Even in our life still, it's just a part of our lives, isn't it? It's not the whole. So, we better pose that question to ourselves, why? It's a good grounding, a good reminder that we better buckle up. There's no question of life counts, this life. My concern is this life, because uh, last round for me, so... 
If you're coming back a hundred times over, you can live a stupid life. Now when you have decided this is your last life, you better live well, isn't it? Final run. Last lap must be the best lap, isn't it? The physical presence of the guru is actually a hindrance. If physical presence is everything, that's called charisma, not grace. This is not charisma, this is grace. But I sit here, I don't sit here, I can run the satsang the same way. Only problem is you cannot remain focused, that is your problem. If you… if you're willing to sit here, simply focused as you are right now. No video, no audio, no nothing. We'll still run the satsang wonderfully well, okay? It's just that… The unfortunate reality for many, many masters in the past has been this, that always the spiritual processes that they started always gathered much more momentum after the left, for most of them it is so. So you want to do it that way? That is also fine <laughs> because the physical absence will make the other presence very powerful always. It is not just an emotion. The reality of physically being absent always enhances the other dimension much more. So, if such a thing happens tomorrow, that will also be to your benefit. You don't have to really concern about that, tomorrow it won't happen. <laughs> Someone asked me, Sadhguru, Jay Krishnamurti was a master of his intellect. Rajneesh was a master of controversy. What are you? I said, I'm a master of chaos <laughs> I know how to harness chaos. I can make a chaotic situation culminate into something fantastic. Suppose you leave tomorrow, is our spiritual journey going to end? Definitely not. Instead of piloting from outside, it could be piloted from inside. Thank you for sharing this moment of reflection. Leave your comment below and share your own experiences. Don't forget to subscribe for more inspiration and invite others to do the same.